listening. This is Pam from NortheastWheelsEvents.com in Duncannon, Pennsylvania. A neat little car show. And we've stumbled across a real gem. This is a 1948 Playboy. I'm sure you've, uh, it's a tough one. If you're really good, you might have heard about it. No, it's not Jordan Playboy, which is pre-war. Uh, this particular Playboy was built in America uh, for one year only. And its owner, Frank, is here to tell us more about it. It's a cool little roadster. You can get an idea of the size. Frank, uh, when was the Playboy built? Playboy was built in 1948. It was built in Buffalo, New York. It was only built for one year, and the company went bankrupt. The, uh, what, what power is her? There were different colors on it. This is uh, the original red color that was on the car here. Uh huh. What, what's under the hood? What, uh, what powers the uh, car? Playboy used five different engines. They used an IXV3 Hercules engine, a four-cylinder Continental engine, the uh, six-cylinder Studebaker engine, the uh, Willys uh, Jeep engine, mm -hmm. with uh, four of the models, and this one has an IXV3 Hercules industrial engine in it. That's amazing. Now this is a totally, uh, well, an assembled car in the way that they used a lot of parts from other cars. They did. Uh, they can used, you show us around? They used some Studebaker, a lot of Studebaker, they used some GM, they used uh, uh, Ford. Uh, I cataloged all the parts on a list of papers. I took it apart so I know what was in the car. Now the uh, hood ornament Studebaker. The hood ornament is Studebaker. Uh-huh. The front end was designed by Playboy. Right. The rear end is a Studebaker rear end, which was uh, narrowed and cut down. The uh, chrome work, this is the body was all built by Playboy, and they pounded those panels out by hand. Oh, geez. It's all steel, I presume? Big pardon? Steel? Yes, it's all steel car. There's no plastic in this except for the knobs on the dash. Very good. Very good. You're going to open the hood? I will open the hood for you here. You were saying this motor uh, is actually a modified flathead four Hercules that they added the uh, distributor because there's originally a. It was modified from Magneta to distributor. They modified the water pump system. The radiator is a handmade radiator for this car. Jeez. They changed the induction system from an updraft to a downdraft right here. Uh huh. This is some job. What amazes me is uh, the firewall, the way how it's just spot welded down. You were saying that the uh, production line was nothing more than moving pallets. They had wooden giant wooden pallets. They'd set the car on and push it down the assembly line. And I've seen two other Playboys, and basically they made the firewall out of whatever sheets of scrap that they had available at the time. Ah. This is number 48, you were saying? This is 63. 63, okay. And they made a total of 97. Ah, unbelievable. This is fantastic. What an odd car. How did you find her? This car was, uh, I purchased this from the original dealer here in Duncannon. Uh, yes. The original dealer was uh, John Reeser. He had a convoy operation over here at the confluence of the Juniata and the Susquehanna River. Uh huh. And he never sold the car. When the company went bankrupt, he went up to Buffalo and bought the car because it was on loan to him as a demonstrator to get people interested in it. Very good. Uh, he kept the car for many years. I bought it in 1972. It needed a total restoration by then because it had sat for many years. How many miles did it have on when you bought it? It had about 19,000 miles on when I bought the car. Jeez. And I tried to buy it numerous times when I was in high school, etc., and John wouldn't sell. So finally, in 72, at, at an advanced stage, he decided it was time to get rid of the Playboy, and I made him an offer. So I am actually, on the title, I have an A in front of the serial number indicating I am the first buyer of this car. So I had dealer plates then. For most he of his life. on dealer plates. Ah. That's how he did it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I have an antique license now on this. Yes. As the first owner, this is this is unbelievable. Now this was one of the many small cars which came out post-war. We also had Keller. Uh, we also had Powell. 
uh, well, Powell wasn't really a small car, it was remanufactured. And of course, Henry J. and all the uh, other ones, Rambler, started out as a small car. Uh, this being a roadster is most unique. Uh, you were saying even the taillights are from another car? The taillight lenses and rims are from 1939 Chevy. The deck lid handle, I think, is 1940 Chevy. The gas cap and the rubber retainer are from 1944. Jeez. Yeah, truly, well, it's not really an assembled car, but it's still using all the available parts and such. Have you been able to locate any other Playboys? That dash and the steering wheel looks familiar. If you go out on the web to us, uh, to playboymotorcars.com, it's all one word, you'll learn everything you need to know about a Playboy. Very good, that's playboymotorcars.com. The man is trying to collect pictures of every uh, Playboy he can, even if it's just a pile of parts, and he's got plenty of them out there and what shape they're in at the present time. Well, we're definitely going to have to check that one out. Again, this is Pam from NortheastWheelsEvents.com with Frank and his very rare Playboy, 1948 Playboy from Buffalo, New York. Well, the car's from Buffalo. Frank is not. He's from here in Pennsylvania. For more cool cars like this, make sure that you check NortheastWheelsEvents.com, the online calendar of events for all things automotive. I can offer one other thing on there. People yes. ask me, is there any relation between the Playboy Motor Car Company and the Playboy Magazine? The Playboy Magazine was named after the Playboy because when Playboy went bankrupt, one of the girls that worked for uh, Playboy Motor Cars went to work for Hugh Heffer and they were deciding what should we call the magazine and she says, let's call it Playboy. What, what an interesting bit of trivia. <laughs> Oh, that is great. That is great. So this actually was the first play, uh, topless Playboy model. This was the original Playboy. The magazine was an imposter as far as I Gotcha. Can say. <laughs> oh, that's great. Thank you, Frank. And again, this is Pam from NortheastWheelsEvents.com. Have a great day, and we'll see you at the shows.